Fans, the kind that run on electric, twist with the wind of souls throughout the film. They are foreboding symbols of death and alternate realities, crossing between worlds of the living and the supernatural. In this video, we review every appearance of them, including one or two other theories about the twisted fans. Angel Heart was released in 1987, written and directed by Alan Parker, and based on the novel Falling Angel by William Schwartzberg. The first appearance of an electric fan is seen in the Kingdom Mission. It is not powered to cool the congregation in a crowded room, each dressed in black, but it is January. The next appearance is a very brief one. Wine Sap escorts Angel to the Inner Sanctum, where he meets Louis Cipher. There is a very quick cut of dual fans. One is powered, the other is apparently not. It may represent two realities, two identities, one similar to the other, but they are not the same. The second of the two fans spins like the other, but it is a facsimile, a pretender, as it does not have the energy to continue. The next appearance is at the Sarah Dodds Harvest Memorial Clinic in the nurse's office. It is seen in the background, sharing cabinet space with religious displays. It too is unpowered, not cooling the staff dressed in white. We have separate appearances where fans are unimportant set props that may be seen anywhere from a religious sermon where no obvious traditional decorations are seen to a facility of medicine and science where decorations are present. Fans cool both those who are black and white, wardrobe speaking. The next fan we see is in Dr. Fowler's bedroom. While the fan is not electrified, it turns clockwise, powered by karma, when Harry Angel brings the doctor into his room. Harry Angel's visit to the doctor's soon-to-be deathbed begins to bend reality. We see the fan change directions and twists counterclockwise. Harry locks the doctor in his room. We see the shadows of the fan blades. They twist back and forth over a mismatched pair of shoes. Does the fan represent two different realities playing over each other? This cut repeats after Harry returns from the diner and discovers the body of Dr. Fowler. Does the two cuts of the shadows over shoes represent before and after Dr. Fowler's demise, or does it represent one timeline shown to the audience twice? Next, is the Italian cafe where Angel meets Cypher. Angel adjusts his belt and poses underneath a powered fan. This is unusual in a couple ways. First, it's still January in an empty room on a street level business near a glass door. Second, with Cypher in the room, it appears the spiritual energy is too strong. The blades move only one direction and may not even been switched on. The following appearance of the fan is easy to overlook and miss, where Angel returns to Pastor John's inner sanctum. We see the blades turn behind Angel's back, its air pushing him to open the mysterious cabinet of secrets. We see the inactive fan in the pulpit again, when Harry sees the lady in black sit alone in the second row. Unlike the upstairs fan, powered with no one to enjoy its breeze, this fan is not powered. Or another way to describe it, the fan is dead. Could there be a relationship? Up next is Angel's Daydream, where he shares a moment alone with Connie as she tells him about her research into Johnny Favorite. Angel has distant memories, including the fan in the walls of a New York hotel underneath a red window. The blades spin quickly to sounds of a human scream. We do not know if it is powered by electric or other unnatural forces. We do see the fan blades from the inside the room, as we, the audience, begin to get inside Angel's head. The turning blades cut to a tape player in an editing technique called a graphic match. 
Harry Angel narrates his visit to see Spider Simpson. His retirement home showcases a fan standing in the corner. Again, it's an everyday set piece, unpowered in the month of January, in a room of freezing elderly. It's 10.30 p.m. and a ceiling fan cools the patrons at the Red Rooster where Angel first meets Toots Sweet. Angel waits for Toots to walk past him as Toots heads for the bar. Notice how Angel lights a cigarette in his preparation of a stage act. The fan is positioned to the far left, Angel in the middle, Toots to our right. Do the blades represent propelling their fates to play out? To continue, there is no stopping it and Harry is tossed out five minutes later. Much later, Angel confronts Toots in his apartment after witnessing his OBS ceremony. It is a brief yet violent confrontation. Angel stuffs his number into Toots's mouth and walks off. We hear the distant voice of Toots singing his requiem to a squeaking fan energized by Toots Sweet's soul fleeting from his body. Up next is the Oyster Bar, where the theme of the place is trophy kills. They are on display high on the walls. Angel makes his way to the phone booth to call Madame Cruzmark. The fans above him are powered, its speed set to low. They pave his way to the phone, where Margaret, on the other end of the call, is unable to answer. Angel has visions again inside the phone booth of a fan below a red window. The bar and fans represent death. Harry Angel discovers the murdered body of Margaret Cruzmark and tries to emotionally recover with a drink at a local bar. We hear both the piano keys playing Girl of My Dreams and the squeaks of a fan. Before a close-up is followed by a mid-shot, showing both Harry and the fan above him. The fan is seen spinning clockwise and counterclockwise, depending if you look into the mirror or not. Karma from two spiritual realities power the blades. Because the reflection we see is a true mirror image, it's becoming more difficult to discern which one is real and which one is not. In a Catholic church, Harry Angel meets Louis Cipher to give him updates on his search for Johnny Favorite, as grim as the news is. In the background, there are at least two fans mounted on the pillars. They are immobile, their blades frozen. The fans peer over its pews with the duty overseeing the followers. They move neither for an angel or a devil. Does it mean the fans have no power here? Or does it show that Cypher's supernatural energy has no influence? He sits in the seats, taunting, testing, waiting. When Epiphany visits Harry at his room, they dance and begin an interlude that intertwines visions that may or may not been in Harry's mind. The images are quick, nightmarish, hell in origin. The symbolism may flash in front of our eyes, but the vision of a fan is now associated with blood and sacrifice. The blades spin, they cannot be stopped. Wine sap is shown in an extremely short cut, a snippet that reveals an unexpected moment he is shadowed by a twisting fan, a very ominous symbol. We see other spinning blades. What do they mean? Many questions are answered by Ethan Kruzmark when he gives his narration of what happened on New Year's Eve 1943. We learn explicitly the fan is associated to a human sacrifice so Johnny Favorite can steal a soul. Harry Angel, with a terrible intuition, returns to Margaret Cruzmark's home and discovers he is Johnny Favorite. Mephistopheles, the devil, meets Favorite there 
with a cane in his right hand that looks much different than the first. Louis Cipher plays one of Favorite's tunes on a turntable, and it spins clockwise like a fan. Seems Margaret had a spinning fortune-telling object in her home after all. Before we get into a couple bonus theories about what twists in the wind, like, share, or subscribe if you want to see more content like this one. It does help grow the channel. When fans turn both clockwise and counter, we see two realities. One for Harry Angel, the other for Johnny Favorite. But fans are not the only things twisting. Harry Angel's tape recorder is also seen spinning in different directions. He is seen rewinding or re-recording, overriding his testimony, keeping favorite secret love of the Evangeline Proudfoot a secret. And like the fan blades, Angel spins two stories, two truths, one recorded and the other forever lost. What else is seen spinning with a hidden meaning? It comes very early in the film. We see Cypher's walking stick before we see his face. It turns patiently one way and the other. It is one of two canes Cypher carries. The symbolism of hell carried in his hand that opens the film is bookended when we see Johnny Favorite descend to the underworld by way of the elevator. The gears spin both clockwise and counterclockwise. When Harry reaches the lower levels of hell, his face looks much less of Angel and begins looking more like Johnny Favorite. Let me know in the comments below what meanings do you see in the fans? Did I miss any? This is Mr. G of Synergy saying it's better to break bread with a friend than cracking an egg with the devil. Check out other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.